This is the world's single most documented genocide in modern history. And yet world leaders not only are standing by, but the United States is actively arming Israel and providing the diplomatic cover for Israel to continue carrying out this genocide. Every day, every hour, every minute, there is a new video that comes out of Gaza documenting this genocide in a way that we've never seen before. Genocide is a legal term. It comes out of the Rome Statute and the Genocide Convention. Genocide requires intent and action. For the last three months, we have seen Israeli government officials, leaders, individuals in the military express clear genocidal intent. <laughs> של עידוד ההגירה של תושבי עזה אנחנו חייבים לקדם זה, זה ההזדמנות לרכז עכשיו פרויקט הגירה פרויקט של עידוד הגירתם של תושבים מעזה אל מדינות העולם Israel has already carried out three out of five of the genocidal actions described under the treaties. So killing members of the group, that's clearly taken place here. Causing members of the group serious physical and mental harm, that's also clearly taken place here. And finally, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about their physical destruction in whole or in part. And that's also clearly taken place here. If Israel didn't drop a single bomb on Gaza, but all it did was cut off food, water, electricity to its 2.3 million residents, that action alone is sufficient to constitute genocide under the treaties. But of course, we know not only did Israel impose a total siege, it also carried out indiscriminate, uninterrupted bombardment for over three months. It's the totality of Israel's actions in this moment, which clearly constitutes genocide. That's consistent with the opinion of genocide scholars. Early on into Israel's assaults, we had 800 genocide scholars come out and say that this was a case of imminent genocide. 47 state crime scholars came out later on to say that Israel was actually carrying out the annihilation phase of genocide. We know that Israel is also committing the crime against humanity of forced displacement. They have uprooted 2 million of Gaza's 2.3 million population and displaced them from their homes. And they've also destroyed over half of all the buildings in Gaza. So these are people who, even if today there was a ceasefire, would not find homes to go back to. Israel has violated every law of war that exists during its genocidal campaign. It has violated the law on proportionality. They have violated the law on distinction between civilians and combatants. They have violated all of the laws which guarantee the safety of civilian infrastructure and also infrastructure and personnel which are supposed to be protected, like hospitals and health workers and journalists. Israel is very much at war with the United Nations. Israel has also treated with contempt any statements coming out of the United Nations attempting to require Israel to comply with international law in any way. But that's also consistent with its behavior for the last 75 years of its existence. Israel has never followed any UN resolution, be it coming out of the General Assembly or the Security Council, that seeks to hold it accountable for its violations of international law. Israel has systematically ignored all of those resolutions. And it's that impunity it's that failure to hold Israel accountable that has gotten us to where we are today. It's allowing Israel to carry out and oversee an apartheid regime for over seven decades that has gotten us to the point where we are today, which is that it is committing genocide before our eyes. It is committing forced displacement in a scope that we've never seen before, one that actually exceeds the forced displacement that we saw during the Nakba of 1948. But it is allowed to do all of this while the world watches because the world has never held it accountable for its violations of international law. And every single time, Israeli impunity has reigned. And so when we watched the images of Israeli soldiers acting in total contempt for Palestinian life, Palestinian possessions, Palestinian land, we know that they also feel emboldened to do so. They feel emboldened not only to carry out these crimes, but to record them and post them for the world to see because they know very well that they've never been held accountable and they don't expect to be held accountable in this instance either. 
And under the Genocide Convention, we know that states not only have an obligation to sanction genocide once it's happened, but also to prevent genocide, leaving aside entirely the role of certain states like the United States, which are actively responsible for this genocide through the provision of arms and unlimited funding and diplomatic protection. We should see many more states cutting all ties with Israel. We should see many more states applying sanctions against Israel. We should see many more states actually seeking to freeze Israeli assets and apply real serious points of pressure in order to try to compel Israel to comply with its international obligations. But the prosecutor Karim Khan has sat idly while he has received petition after petition calling on him to investigate this ongoing genocide and calling on him to issue arrest warrants like he did when Russia invaded Ukraine. It's only right that when bullets are flying and bombs are landing and destruction and mayhem is the staple diet of too many of the most vulnerable people. The law needs to be on the front lines and we're not going to wait or be pedestrian when the law has to be seen in action. But he's done absolutely nothing. And in fact, not only has he done nothing, but in fact, certain of his actions actually indicate that he's compromised. And the only, therefore, reasonable solution in this case is his immediate resignation. Two months into this genocide, the International Criminal Court, which has a mandate to prevent and sanction mass atrocities, notably genocide, has been completely absent from this conversation and has proven instead that it is a puppet of the West, that it is actually an instrument of Western domination and not an instrument of accountability and justice. And I think it's also important for us to continue to follow the money. Weeks into Israel's genocide on Gaza, Israel awarded exploration licenses to the world's leading gas companies, including BP, to explore for billions of dollars of Gazan gas, which has been unexplored until now. And nobody had a problem with that, not the companies who were recipients of these exploration licenses, not the world who watched this happen. People need to understand that the natural resources on occupied land are the property of the occupied people under international law, not of the occupier. But yet Israel has no problem in committing a clear violation of international law yet again because it knows it'll get away with it. So what's left of international law? I'm not sure because every time Israel breaks the law, and is not held accountable for its violations of international law, it actually weakens international law. It creates a new precedent by which any state at any point in time going forward can point to Israel's actions in the past and say, well, if Israel targeted a hospital, if Israel killed over 80 journalists, if Israel can assassinate intellectuals and writers and thinkers, then so can we. Because in fact, that rule is not an absolute rule. There can be exceptions to that rule, as we've seen Israel create many exceptions. And those exceptions were considered legitimate because nobody ever held Israel accountable. So it's really important for people to understand that Every time Israel gets away with a crime, it weakens the protections that are available for all of humanity. And this is a very, very dangerous thing that makes the world overall a more dangerous place. It's so essential in this moment to center Palestinian voices. We are credible narrators of our own lived experience. And unfortunately, the corporate media does not allow us to present our lived experiences to the world and to contextualize our realities. That's why it's so important to support alternative media that does give Palestinians a platform, amplifies their voice, and allows them to tell their stories. Join the future of journalism. Join Double Down News on Patreon.